हेलो दिस इज डॉक्टर महेश कल्याण शेट्टी असोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग वालचंद इंस्ट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी इन दिस सेशन विल डिस्कस अबाउट आई आर सी स्टैंडर्ड लाइव लोड्स विच आर कंसिडर फॉर द ब्रिचेस द लर्निंग आउटकम विल बी एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू नो द कन्फिग्रेशन ऑफ वेरियस आई आर सी स्टैंडर्ड लाइव लोड्स लेट इज हैव अ लुक एट द वेरियस loads acting on the bridges the dead load live load impact load water current forces thermal forces wind forces seismic load breaking force forces due to curvature forces on parapets frictional resistance due to expansion of bearings and erection forces so these are the variety of loads which will act on the bridges out of these the live load is a most crucial live load uh, load which is acting on the bridge the live loads are those which are caused by vehicles which pass over the bridge and are transient in nature so the bridge design standards specify the design loads which are meant to reflect the worst loading that can be caused on the bridge by traffic so in the picture you can see a typical vehicle Okay, which has got a, a typical arrangement of the axles and wheels however to reduce the confusion between the variety of vehicles the indian road congress has specified some standard live loads which we call it as irc standard live loads these are the standard live loads which are recommended by irc there are basically four types of standard loadings first one is the irc class aa loading wherein we have uh, both system of track as well as wheel the second is irc class 70r loading where we have again a uh, both system track as well as wheel and the third one is class a loading and fourth one is class b loading so class a and class b loading are only wheel system let us discuss in detail about the class a a loading and first of all let us see the track system so in the picture you can see a, a 70 kilo newton load is been transferred with the help of this uh, tank military tank and and this particular military tank has got certain area in contact with the ground the length of contact is 3.6 meter and since this particular tank has got two chains so in the cross section we can see the the load is transferred through a width of 850 mm for one chain and for another chain also uh, through a width of 850 mm so 350 kN is transferred through one chain and 350 is transferred to uh, through other chain so total 700 kN load is transferred to the ground and in the cross section we have to keep some minimum clear distance that is indicated as c in this picture so that value depends upon the carriage way width so uh, the width from 3.8 to 5.5 meter the carriage way the minimum clear distance is 0.3 meter and over 5.5 meter carriage way width the minimum c is 1.2 meter so this is how the class a a track system would look like whereas class a wheeled system total load is of 400 kN and this 400 kN is transferred through two axles so uh, in the section we can see the axle here with some specific uh, uh, load magnitude and the spacing between the wheels and in the plan the spacing of the axle is visible it is 1.2 so there are two axles spaced at 1.2 meter distance and the distance between the two wheels in a axle also is given so 300 is the contact width of the vehicle uh, the the wheel then 300 is a spacing and again 300 is the contact width and in between we have uh, 
700 mm then 300 300 300 so so this particular configuration is very clearly shown here so this total load is of 400 kilo newton so this is what about the class a wheeled system then uh, next one is the 70 hour loading wheeled system let us see which comprises a total 1000 kilo newton load and this is basically a, a train which consists number of axles so in the picture the load train we can see and this particular loads are present at different different axles and the there will be a bogey for this load 70 r wheel system so this bogey loading is again a total 400 kilo newton bogey loading is there 200 and 200 and uh, wheel spacing of this particular system is also shown here so this is 70 r loading wheel system magnitude 1000 kilo newton then irc class a and b loading now these loadings are the wheel system so we don't have a track system in this case we have a wheel system so class a loading consists of a wheel load and and this basically is a train composed of a driving vehicle and trailers of specified axle spacing and loads and class b is similar to class a only the magnitude of the load is different so let us look at these particular loadings class a and class b loading in the elevation now what we can see is this class a and class b basically are a truck and trolley so in the picture we can see a truck comprising four axles and beyond the truck there are two trolleys two axles per trolley in this way we have a total eight axles four axles for the truck and the remaining four axles for the trolleys and this particular axle carries a specific load which is shown here so for example uh, the truck if i consider the first axle is of 27 kilo newton second axle is of 27 and the next two axles which we call it as the rear axles of the truck carries 114 kilo newton and for the trolleys the axle load is 68 68 68 and 68 so these are the magnitude of the axle loads and in a inner axle there are two wheels so in the next slide we will see in plan how this particular uh, wheel spacing is there and one more thing that the spacing between the axle is also given here so that we can learn from this diagram for example the the first two axle the spacing is 1100 mm then the second and third axle the spacing is 3200 and then next is 1200 and then 4300 1000 3000 and 3000 so this is how the the axles are spaced and uh, from one vehicle to another vehicle the clear distance is 18.5 meter minimum so the next sub subsequent load will come at a distance of 18.5 meter and the total load of class a is 554 kilo newton and for class b the configuration is same only the magnitude of the loads are different therefore you can see here for class a the loads were 27 27 114 like that and for class b the magnitude of the load is reduced you see instead of 27 here it will be 16 16 then 68 68 41 41 like this so this class b loading is almost 60 percent of class a so class a and class b the difference is in only the magnitude of the load rest all is same now this is the plan of the truck the first truck which was there in the first uh, previous slide 
So this is a plan of that truck. You can see uh, the, the front two axles are the uh, first two axles of the vehicle and the re last two, these are the rear axle of the truck. And the wheels spacing is also shown here. And the spacing between the axles are also shown. So this is how the wheels are configured the first two axles and real two axles. So, four axles are shown here of the truck. And out of this total uh, uh, area of the wheel, some specific area of the wheel is in contact with the ground. And that can be determined from this table. So, it depends upon the axle load. So, in the diagram you can see there is a contact uh, uh, width B and W. So, B is shown here in this picture. And this is B here you can see and W is the width of that particular contact area. So, this B and W are dependent on the axle load. Now, for, for example, for an axle of 114, B value is 250 and W is 500. In this way, the contact area of the wheel is different for different axle. So, based on this table, we have to take it. So, this is all the other details. In case of the two uh, lane of the vehicles, the minimum clear distance is a G and that G value is taken from this particular table. So, this is what is in configuration of class A and class B loading. So, these are the live combinations, uh, live load combinations that we need to consider for the analysis. Thank you.